When you take your child to hospital for a minor foot injury, the last thing you expect is that he's going to die three days later. Tristan Byrne's parents have told us their devastating story to highlight quick, uh, cases of possible medical malpractice around the country. We had to wear these, um, you know, the, the masks that just, so you don't breathe in the germs. I'm just imagining what he's thinking with us all of these masks on and how frightening it must be. So I ripped my mask off because I couldn't speak to him like that. And he said, Dad, I'm dying. They're not listening to me. I'm dying. Vanessa and Tim have vivid memories of their son, Tristan. It's been more than two years since his tragic death. The nightmare started with what seemed to be a trivial incident. He was running to his best friend's place and he hurt his, his foot. He came to me the next day and he said, Mom, my foot's a bit sore. By the Monday morning, Tristan's ankle was swollen and painful, so Vanessa took him to the nearest hospital, St Mary's in Marion Hill, a suburb just outside Durban. St Mary's is a state-aided district hospital, and for Vanessa and Tim, who were not on medical aid, it was their only option. They took him for an x-ray and they said there's a green line fracture and they're going to put the cast on, which they did. And they just said, um, come back the next day for circulation test and then after six weeks we take the cast off. Simple as that. Tim and Vanessa are divorced. Their children, Tristan and Leah, spend time with both of them. Tim, a tour guide, was away working when Tristan's cast was put on. He was so excited because he was going to go to school with his cast on and he was phoning me and telling me, what are we going to draw on my cast, Dad? During the, the evening, he started moaning that his leg was sore and, and he kept me up all night and I couldn't believe how it could be sore. The next day, Tristan was back at St Mary's. His foot still sore. The doctor said there was no problem. He should be back at school within a couple of days and changed the plaster cast. They were starting to cut the cast and he was screaming and they were saying, but it's not sore, it can't be sore. And then they basically told him he's being a baby. So now we're thinking he's trying to get out of school. But what the doctors hadn't picked up was that Tristan had developed a condition known as compartment syndrome. Compartment syndrome is a serious condition that occurs when there's a, a buildup of pressure within the muscle tissue, possibly from a plaster cast being too tight. Dr. Steve Naidu is an internationally respected forensic pathologist. Is a possible cause of compartment syndrome a plaster cast that is too tight? Well, yes, uh, certainly it's a well-known uh, cause of a compartment syndrome. Is it uh, common or necessary to do a circulation test once uh, the plaster cast has been put in place? Yes, it's a uh, very typical general practice um, an orthopedic principle that a circulation check to be done to make sure the cast is not too tight. Now on the first day they said that Tristan would have to come back for a circulation test. Was that done then? No. Then you took Tristan home with the new cast? Yeah, then we went home and he just lay down. He could, still couldn't walk and um, as the night progressed he was be breathing very badly, he was like... <gasps> After a night of virtually no sleep, Vanessa took Tristan back to the hospital and x-rays were taken of his chest. When they came back, the x-rays had blotches on them, so the doctor said, mm, he's got TB. And I was like, how can he have TB? He's a healthy boy, he doesn't even have a cough. Don't you do a sputum test or a blood test? And the doctor just looked at me as, as if to say, well, don't undermine my authority. Yeah. Dr. Naidu attended Tristan's autopsy, pro bono, on behalf of Vanessa and Tim. Doctor, were there signs of TB bearing in mind that Tristan was being treated for it? Well, the post-mortem was able to confirm that it was not TB. What, what it was, was these multiple seeding or seedlings of septic foci in the various parts of the lung which on x-ray looked like TB. So it wasn't tuberculosis at all. If compartment syndrome isn't treated, the muscle, starved of blood and oxygen, develops an infection which can spread to the vital. Nine the next morning, Tristan was admitted to the adult TB ward at St. Mary's. When Tim got to St. Mary's, he was met with a scene that left him in total shock. They couldn't take his vital signs, they couldn't take his pulse, they couldn't take his blood pressure. 
and uh, the, his sugar level had gone down to virtually zero. He was just lying there and I'm still trying to Google TB and the symptoms and he was sweating and I had to keep wiping him down. I had to keep running to the kitchen to get ice water to put down his throat to try and cool him down and his body started turning blue by then, bit by bit. And I turned him over and his whole back, all along his kidneys and his spine, had started to go black and blue. The St Mary's medical team finally admitted that there was a major problem and arranged for Tristan to be admitted at the RK Khan Hospital in Chatsworth. But it was a slow and hazardous process. Vanessa, you were in the ambulance with Tristan. I was. I said to him, why, why aren't the sirens on? We're in a rush. Oh, it's not a matter of life and death, he said. Which I, even at that time, still did not realize how serious was, the situation yeah. was. Tim, traveling in his own car, arrived at the RK Khan before the ambulance. I had to carry my own son out of the ambulance with the ambulance attendant. What had started as a minor foot injury had escalated into a race against time to save Tristan's life. Although hospital staff and paramedics didn't seem to see it that way. And here at the RK Khan Hospital, there was hardly a sense of urgency. So at RK Khan, they didn't even know that Tristan was on his way in an ambulance. He was supposed to be put into an icy ward. That, that's what we were told by St. Mary's. So eventually, they put him in a general ward. We had to bring in another bed, put him in the other bed, take him off the stretcher from the ambulance, put him in that bed. And then there was no places to hang his drips. By now, he had had three or four drips in him. I was holding the drips up myself. Eventually, I had to hang them in the, onto the window catches so that I could go and help Vanessa look for a doctor to attend to him. Well, eventually, the intern then came and looked at him, saw that he was serious. She then called the doctor, who was a very nice doctor, in fact. We told him about the tuberculosis, and he said, well, um, did they do a sputum test? We looked at him, he said, no, he hadn't done a sputum test. He looked again at Tristan, and he said he was allergic to the tuberculosis medicine. So he then started pumping Tristan full of steroids and um, something that made him feel better. Then the doctor said to us, oh, you're so lucky, your son could have died. Thinking that Tristan was at last getting the right treatment and even showing signs of recovery, Tim left the RK Khan Hospital to drop Vanessa at home. She hadn't slept for four days. Words can't describe the scene he came back to. As I got back there, there were three or four nurses around him and they were laughing and joking around him. And I just freaked out and I just went up to them and I said, what's going on here, what's going on? And they were, um, they said, no, his drips have come out and they were poking, poking, trying to look for, for um, his veins. And the sheets next to him were all full of blood from all the, the, the puncture marks that they were trying to uh, get these drips in. After the nurses left, Tim was alone with Tristan. He lay on the bed next to his son. And he looked at my eyes and he was into my eyes and then he just put his head down on my, on my chest. And then I saw that he, he wasn't breathing anymore and started giving him mouth to mouth. And while I, while I was giving him mouth to mouth, um, doctors came in and pulled me away. And um, they started to give him CPR. About five minutes later, they just came and told me, sorry, it's too late, it's gone. Dr. Naidu has his own opinion on why Tristan died. The cause of death, I believed, the end result uh, was a state of septic shock and a multiple organ failure. So my opinion about its nature of its uh, development was that a compartment syndrome had developed in this lower limb. The septic infection had set into the damaged muscle and spread throughout the body, resulting in organ failure. The fact is, after you had done the autopsy, it's only how serious we realized uh, how, how many mistakes they had made. The Burns decided to take action and sue for damages. How often does that happen every day to people from the townships and people with no money that take their kids to these hospitals and, the, and it just gets swept under the rug? We're not in it for the money. We don't want any money or anything. We just want people to know or someone to take accountability because 
We feel so guilty in the first place. Ian Dutton, an advocate in Durban, is so concerned about the state of our health care, he's written a book that addresses the challenges. The medical field is being inundated with litigation at the moment. The court roles are becoming increasingly clogged up with this type of case, sometimes well worth your worthy cases and sometimes cases that really shouldn't even be, have been launched in the first place. And if our healthcare system flounders, then we all lose out. St Mary's and the RK Khan Hospital refused our interview request, citing that Tristan's death is still under investigation by the Health Professions Council. The Health Professions Council also refused the opportunity of an interview, saying that the case had not been concluded. But they did confirm that a complaint had been lodged against five doctors. A complaint that was lodged two years ago. For financial compensation, Vanessa and Tim will go to the courts, but it's not about the money. In this case, they can only hope for compensation in terms of pain and suffering. In South Africa, the, the loss of a child through medical negligence or medical malpractice is generally hardly compensated for. I would like to just say that, you know, you have the right to challenge the doctor. Where I was wrong is that I trusted the doctors. They did not listen to Tristan. We have to live with the, with the guilt because we couldn't afford medical aid. What do you think would have happened if uh, Vanessa hadn't taken uh, Tristan to the hospital at all? I think there's a good possibility that the inflammation could have settled without a plaster cast and not become uh, accelerated into the compartment syndrome. So I think it's quite possible that Tristan would... So he'd be alive today? Yes, be alive today.